we just landed in this island. I don't know what it's called right now. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know, we don't know where we are. Anyway. We could be anywhere right now. It's pretty amazing. We're on a small island off the east coast of Madagascar. We're looking for new waves. It's a heavy piece of coast in cyclone season. I doubt any surfers have ever been where we're going. There's spiders, I mean, there's snakes. You know, it's going to take two days to medevac you out here, so if you get hurt, you're fucked. There's a lot of sharks. The reef here is really jagged with heads of just razor blades. It's scary stuff. And yeah, it's really remote, it's hard to get to. You know, worst case scenarios are pretty bad. Yeah, I would say this is probably one of the most remote places on Earth to, to do a surf trip, and uh, I guess that's what adventure is all about. Madagascar is one of those like amazing countries that has like a big capital city, Antenarivo, in the middle of the country. It has a few other major cities down the spine and one arterial toll road, and beyond that. There's practically nothing. We're looking for new waves just off the coast right now and we're planning on jumping on a, on a boat tomorrow and heading out. I've got Slade and Frank with me. We want to get these waves that we see on Google Earth and hopefully they are as good as what we think they are. We're not too sure if anyone's ever surfed them before or what's really the story, but it's really excited and the whole mission is just to kind of go to these places that we've seen on Google Earth that look like a pea pass and you know those uh, famous breaks in Indo, so it's a big adventure for all of us. You know, there are a lot of uh, external factors to deal with and you know, coming into an area where there is no infrastructure in place, everything you either have to bring with you or you have to do with what the local villagers can supply. A lot of preparations got into this and I'm really excited to hopefully see something new and to find a new discovery would be so awesome. Okay, Alain, Captain, El Capitan. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> we're, we're starting here. Yes. So tomorrow? Tomorrow we pass here, mm -hmm. take a look, and we will arrive here at uh, maybe 10. So we're going to okay. use this as our central base. We set up camp tomorrow, and then from there we can head out in any direction. So. If we want to go onto the land and, 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 and drive, is it possible? Yeah. The roads? Particularly impossible. Impossible. To make uh, 150 kilometers, you yeah. need sometimes six, six to seven days. Okay. Or if you want why you can. Yeah, yeah. That sounds no. reasonable. <laughs> Have you ever seen people surf? You see people surf before here? Yeah? No. No one? No, never. So we are independent, so completely independent, for seven days. No, that looks so <laughs> amazing. It sounds amazing. <laughs> we are very excited. Thank you. So are you. We are very excited. So are you. Initially on the first night, the captain seemed pretty cool. It's my uh, job as the surf guide on this trip to plan out where we're going to go surfing. So it's always interesting to meet the captain. I would say it's a, at least a three or four hour sail to the first destination that I've earmarked on, on Google Earth, the first reef that we want to have a good look at. I've been coming here for a couple of years now and uh, I've mapped out most of the coast. And this is kind of the last piece of the puzzle. The boat looks good, it looks bigger than I thought. Things are going well, so far. Six in the morning here in Madagascar, the boat's packed and we, we're ready to head off into the unknown and to hopefully find some new waves. Let's go. We left the island and uh, anticipation is, it builds. You know, we've been planning this for a couple months and um, you check it out on Google Earth, you know, you make a plan and you look at the reefs and you, you hope that the reefs will be something, at least something, a rideable wave. We sailed for three hours. We got to the first break and it was like a big relief to actually what? see these perfect uh, reef breaks that have potential. What? Oh, there, I can see it. Fucking <laughs> Oh, my word. Holy fuck, boys. We've just come around here and we've been looking through the binoculars at this little corner here. Little V corner. I mean, it's small, but it's lined up. Oh, look at this next one. Oh. This looks like a great zone, and we'll be coming back here when the swell comes up for sure. Uh, on all my trips, the rule whoever catches the first wave names it, and the reason why we do that is because it just gets a guy's amp to get out to every spot. We got to the first L reef, 
and uh, there was a wave running off the you know, uh, cooking wave and uh, to see a brand new wave that maybe no one's ever surfed and uh, to know that you've done all the work to get there, just um, that was a really cool feeling, you know, a real sense of accomplishment. Instantly it was like, oh my gosh, you know, the reason we all surf is for that exact feeling. You know, hopefully on a bigger Tina swell it would start firing. I mean, it's day one, we're three hours in, on the boat and we've really found something that's, that looks pretty legit. Twiggy is a um, big wave world champ. He charges big waves, he's not scared, and he loves to get barreled. Twig, <laughs> the twig. You know, I've had the pleasure of traveling with him over the last eight years, going to surf California, Mavericks, Chores, um, Dungeons. So yeah, I've known Twig a long time, and yeah, he's, he's a legend, you know, he's the general. Sailed further up the coast and then across to the island where we stayed the first night and we looked the right hand off the island and was like, whoa, there's another one. So we just arrived to the most beautiful island I've ever seen in Madagascar. Slade, Slade the Blade, yeah, I've known Slade the last couple of years, he's been coming to Cape Town, I'm from Cape Town, so Flippy surfs unbelievable, like one of the smoothest styles I've ever seen, it's just this amazing hack. Slade seems to be one of uh, two or three of the top surfers in South Africa. Absolute pleasure to watch, I'm sure he's going to make a huge stamp on the surfing world anytime soon. This is where we're going to stay. Frank reckons it is. Solomon Island. Frank, he's the face of the trip. <laughs> he, uh, he's the good looking kid from Cape Town. Frank Solomon's a big wave surfer also. A very, very funny guy. <laughs> Obviously charges big waves. Everyone, everyone knows that. Just picked up an awesome international sponsorship deal that's going to keep him on the road and, and surfing and flying the South African flag in big waves for the next couple of years. So he's the guy that's really made it happen. You know, he's just proof that uh, hard work and dedication pays off. The first day that we arrived that afternoon, we got to this uh, remote island. Palm fringed, beautiful white sand, paradise really. And there's no one around us. There's uh, absolutely no one. I was like, oh, I could have my family there, my house there. I was already picturing how I was going to live there. Slade was telling me how he was going to have the other side of the island. And we managed to get all our stuff on shore and uh, walked around a little bit and set up camp in the trees. Ah, oh, fuck off, you stupid mosquito. We got a cuddle. We got a cuddle? Yeah. Okay. When I saw these things on the internet, I thought they were the best things I'd ever seen. But time will tell if it can carry fucking the weight of three men. Yeah, bro, what the heck's going on here? Thanks, crocodiles. That's the whole reason why I got these tents, because we're in the jungle right now. And, and the whole point of it is to be in the air, so, I mean, crocs aren't going to get us. I'm not that worried. But I'm just not sure where this thing goes. Can't say I've ever slept in a tree before. Yeah, that's good. Our tent is set up properly, and we actually just jumped in and out, and it's really comfortable. It's actually better than sleeping in the boat, to be honest. <laughs> that is the dream, really. Every surfer's dream, you know? Your own island with a beautiful wave running off the one corner. Just a beautiful setting for, for, for the rest of the trip, you know? And uh, be able to just go on the island and set up camp is, is really the ultimate, uh, ultimate surf experience. Yeah, so from the island, obviously that wasn't the end of it. We could have probably just, you know, rested up on our laurels and waited for the swell, which was meant to hit in a few days. So instead of like relaxing and, uh, and sitting around and doing nothing, we packed up the camp and, and, and headed north again, you know, and uh, sailed um, a little bit up the coast. And we checked out these two beautiful bays, you know, magic bays with villages in both of them. Um, looking at the right, Across from here, looks like another great fucking reef setup. And now we're here in, in V Bay. So we made our way to a V-shaped bay and checked that out. And wow, that was absolutely, you know, incredible. Another postcard place. Twig wanted to, he wanted to go check further north, a couple of spots he checked on Google Earth. There looked like a couple more, you know, potential waves further, further north from where we were. 
we sent uh, Slade and Frank into the village to s let them negotiate a place to stay and some food for tonight. Um, I would be a little bit worried about them, but they've got Mr. Scarf with them, so uh, generally he knows, he knows what's happening. He's, he's the fixer. As we came into V-Bay, Slade and myself went ashore with Mr. Scarf to meet the chief of the village. Slade and I went to his little house and, and sat with him and met with him. And once they realized we were there just to surf, they were super stoked. How did he become chief? People would vote for them. And okay. They got the majority of the votes and they, they elected to be the chief. It's like the president? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, if you think if you go, say, to America, to New York, you don't go and <laughs> find Obama and ask him if you can sleep in his town, you know, like that experience is really unique and the whole village knew that we were there after that. <laughs> so the chief, is he, was he like happy to see us that we came onto his island? Yeah. For us to ask him if we can stay in his village? He's happy. To come into a village like that and see the way they live and the way they eat and, you know, the games that they play with strings and, you know, the sand and, I mean, they do have these little marbles, I don't know where they got them from, but you know, they haven't even used a cell phone. I mean, there's got to be people who are adults in that village who have never even touched a cell phone. They literally live with the land. You have your house, you, you grow your own vegetables. That kind of lifestyle, to know that it's still alive is, is pretty amazing. You know, with everything that we have, all the, all the bullshit that we collect in our lives that, that we, we deem as important, you know, the material shit, um, they don't have any of that, you know. Uh, they're healthy and they're really happy people. That for me was a really special moment and you know, I think people in the world can learn a lot from that. Had a little surf again. This wave was actually really fun, but it's not one that I would come back to on the, on the swell that's coming up. I think uh, we've got our two waves. I feel will be the best and we'll be probably surfing those two. And uh, yeah, so we've kind of scoped this whole area. We scoped like a hundred kilometer piece of coast. And now we just got to sit and wait for the swell to come in two days. This is my favorite island of the whole trip. Uh, we got a fan base, there's a whole village. We found a really cool, like open area grass patch with palm trees and stuff. So we're gonna set up camp there, it's paradise. Frankie, Slade and I were asleep in the tent below Andrews and Adams, and I was just about to fall asleep. I just heard like boom, and kind of looked next to me. I had no idea what's going on. The whole tree that was holding us up just fell on the ground, like millimeters from hitting us. If that tent wasn't connected to to that certain tree, that tree would land on top of all of us. It's gonna be a long night, I think. <laughs> Yeah, look, the first time I saw the, the hanging, the hanging uh, tents, I thought it was the best thing I'd, that I'd ever seen for Madagascar because uh, further north where we stay, there's a, there's a real danger of crocodiles. The water came in last night, so we were both pushed further and further this way. Yeah, I mean, the tents, the tents are cool. I just don't think we've worked out how to use them just yet. We stayed the night in this uh, beautiful bay here last night and uh, there's some reefs around the corner here that we want to get like a high vantage point to check out. It's a little bit dirty, it's been a bit of a Mentawi's yacht trip so far, so we're gonna, we're gonna get out there and uh, do some, some trekking. I personally really wanted to, and push the boys to, to walk and hike up the, up the cliff so we could kind of get a better idea about the left and kind of see the reef. We managed to get a guy to help us make our way up there. You know what this is? An old uh, set. Never even seen one. That's it. This is what I used to ride away. We don't have Malagasy words for surfing boards. The name of what he names it is the life jacket. The life jacket. <laughs> That's a photo of what I do. Never. Never seen it.
there looked like a couple more, you know, potential waves. You know, just this perfect V with a left and a right on, on both sides. Yeah, I mean, so many waves, so little time. <laughs> Possible to ride them all. First, we just uh, like to say good morning and thank you for having us on your island. <laughs> so here, so thank you so much for your uh, kind kindness. <laughs> so uh, they say good luck in your things you do, and they hope to see you one day. And uh, so next time they will be used to seeing you. <laughs> but this is the first time <laughs> they be used to seeing you when we come back here uh, one day. The waves have kind of been small and um, we kind of scoped out all the places, all the different setups that we had set out to. After a couple of days of, of searching and, and really looking for the best setup, we've come back south to the best setups I think we've found the whole time. And, we're going to base ourselves here on this island and good access to the first two waves we checked out. The reefs looked incredible for some swells. That island wave, to me, looks like it has the best potential on a good, clean swell to really start way up the top, wrap, wrap around and then grow and bowl on the inside. And then the L reef is just uh, more of a short, short, sharp, you know, barrel, like 100 yard barrel. If the swell's supposed to pick up, you know, we're supposed to get up to, to five or six feet at 10, 11 seconds, which should be, you know, hopefully head height. It's going to be amazing to see what they do, you know. The, the excitement's mounting right now, for sure. Uh, we're just leaving our five star luxury accommodation and heading out into the unknown of Madagascar. We're uh, crack of dawning it, so we've got quite a big day ahead of us. First reef is Owl Reef, we're going to go check it now. So the first day that we actually got to the certain spot that the swell had arrived. We just arrived at, uh, I think it's Big Owls. Um, it's in the half a foot region. <laughs> so anyway, I stayed in the boat and I had a little bit of sleep while everyone else surfed and then I think it was about 9.30 or something that I got in. I was just like tired of being on the boat and I wanted to get in the water. So I jumped in and then all of a sudden, as soon as I got out there, the swell just started kicking in. And then, you know, like a four foot set came in and another one, another one, and just started pulsing. Update, this wave looks fucking phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, look, I mean, as soon as a, a boat gets stuck on a reef, it's a problem. Um, we parked in front of the second little wave we checked today, and as we were getting up to leave, I think the anchor were caught in a big piece of coral, and it like pretty much ripped out half the boat when we pulled it up. So Twig and Jay and a couple other boys swam in and tried to swim out the anchor. It's normal on the reef for the anchor to get stuck like that, you just got to dive it off, but he just tried to keep winching it and it was right around this big coral head, so it bust the, uh, bust the winch. Nice work, Woo! Lucky there's a big wave surfer on board. <laughs> yeah, it ripped out like the whole anchor chain and 
the whole piece out. I'm not sure what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to. Captain's gonna. What do you think, Captain? Make a make a reparation. Uh... <laughs> it's so, not the problem. <laughs> tomorrow's the, it's supposed to be the best day, so I'm sure the captain will make it happen for us. Ah, me and the captain, Mr. Impossible. He always calls me the chicken. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can we surf there? No, it's impossible. And we're like, can we sleep on the boat? No, it's impossible. Everything was impossible. Impossible. Captain says, not possible. So we're going to go park somewhere else. Impossible to arrive. It's impossible. Behind, behind. No, you. It's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> but it's not French. So yeah, he was an absolute character, you know, 60 years old. That you can see, he told me he lived his whole life on the ocean and sailing. He's got these deep, deep wrinkles in his eyes, and he just looks like someone who really knows the ocean and what's going on. And he's, he's very French. Like, you know, I told him South Africa was better than France. He almost punched me in the face. It's impossible. For French people, nothing is impossible. It, for African people, it's impossible. It's possible. For, for you, yes. <laughs> well, tomorrow is the day of the actual swell that arrives. The swell's supposed to arrive tomorrow, so, so yeah, I'm really excited to surf some proper waves. And I think, um, you know, today was actually really small, but we got hit our waves, so, you know, if we get a solid um, period tomorrow, you know, we're gonna be looking at some 46 foot perfection. This wave actually does work when it gets over three feet. Fucking magic, magic, magic. Good to get that on the last day, eh? No, that was awesome. Fuck. Yeah, that was awesome. You know, it's been hard. It's been really hard. It's been a struggle. Like, every day, it's just like, what am I going to eat? Like, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to surf? We're so hungry, you know. And, but uh, when we do eat, <laughs> we eat these. <laughs> Uh, it's been alright. The best part of the trip was probably getting waves, but a very exciting part was last night during dinner when we were cooking the lobster on these uh, like wooden that the chef made. You know, he just broke some trees and he made like this little grill. So we're cooking this up for dinner. It's our last night, and we're gonna treat ourselves to some lobster. You know, I thought he was struggling, but anyway, he wasn't. It was just like another day, and he didn't have a problem at all to cook really hard foods to cook out, say, and pouring down rain in the middle of the bush with just a knife and some sticks. It was really cool to see that. For me, this trip has been incredible. Like, I absolute time of my life. I got to see some of the most beautiful <laughs> islands I've ever seen. Amazing water, like with good friends, sleeping in trees and surfing perfect waves. I mean, that
that's as good as it gets. It was very cool. I mean, there were barrels, there were airs. It was good, good for turns, and they had good walls in it when the right actual swell came in. We found some amazing reef setups. You could be leaving the best wave in the world behind and never go look at it again. And, you know, 10 years later, somebody else finds it and you'll be kicking yourself. It convinces me to make another trip out here.